This video is an introduction to our volunteer management system, also known as VMS. It is the tool that we use to log our volunteer time as well as advanced training time. You will be provided the link to take you to this site. To log in, you will use the login username and password that you created when you first applied to the Texas Parks and Wildlife volunteer program. In our case today, we will be using Dan Martin. As a trainee, his screen will look more like what you see compared to myself as an active member. After you log in, you will see this uh, main dashboard screen. A couple of areas that you will look at the summary gets updated as the hours that you've entered get approved. There are members in our chapter that are assigned to review log entries and approve them after making sure that they were entered properly. I, for example, approve members whose last names begin with M through R. So as your entries are approved, these numbers will total up for you. If you wish to make a change in your profile, the, you moved and so you need to update your address, your phone number changes, or you would prefer to use a different uh, name or different spelling that wasn't exactly correct, you can go to the Edit My Profile and make the proper changes. Now, the bulk of our training is going to focus on two of these six options. The Report My Service, and the view my logbook. The others are there for other scenarios and other situations, but predominantly we report our services and then go back and view our logbook if we need to make any changes. I have gone to report our hours, and this is where you will see a drop down list of the possible entries that you can choose from. Just as a quick overview, administrative hours or administrative work is essentially things that we do internally with our chapter in running the chapter, organizing the chapter and in different uh, planning aspects to projects. They get listed under administrative work. AT, as, is, as these next several entries have in front, represent advanced training. They're followed by a couple of entries here for beach cleanup, board or committee members of approved partner. FR represents field research. And as trainees, you will see two special entries, the initial training for classes and initial training for field trips. Again, we'll go into a little bit more detail when we go through various scenarios of when we would choose any of these. We have a couple of entries for maintaining native gardens or doing maintenance duties at an approved partner site. And an, an approved partner represents an organization that we've always already established a relationship to go volunteer at. Let's say we're at Esteriano Grande State Park, Laguna Tascosa, Sea Turtle Link, SBI Birding Centers, and so forth. Those are our approved partners. And natural resources, got new development of trails, if this is something that is new. A new opportunity would be a completely new project that we might inter introduce to our chapter. Outreach events, uh, pick up the valley, technical guidance. Now, all of these can be overwhelming as far as when to use what. And so we're going to go through a couple of scenarios. Uh, a lot of the times that that new trainees are getting used to this system, I would ask your mentor or one of the officers clarification if you're not sure exactly where to add your hours to. And we'll do our best to make sure to include that whenever we're um, having a project or, or anything like that, that we will specify where the time will go to. So let's do this. So. You attended a training class, the first training class this past Wednesday. 
And so if we go to record that time, so you would select initial training. And for all of these possible opportunities, we do include a description just to clarify what this category is for and how to complete the entry. So what we'll do here is we will select January 19th. Training was for three hours. And under the initial training category, we do ask for just a sort of a quick feedback of what you felt the training class or the field trip was like. And so here we will assume that Dan Martin liked it. And in the describe your training or in the description of your work, you want to include as much information so that the approvers like myself can look at this and make sure that the entry was legitimate. And so here we can say Javier de Leon and his presentation was on historical naturalists in the RGB. And we can add Cody Levy, law and ethics. And we can say Texas game warden. We click OK. And now the tool is basically saying, great, we've accepted that. Would you like to make another entry? Now, in our case, I'm going to say no. I'm going to go back to the volunteer dashboard. And let's say that we did something wrong with that entry. We can go to view my logbook. I can select the log. Here's the entry that we just did. We can select that entry and perhaps it was categorized in the wrong opportunity, I can go in here and select delete, or I can go in to edit the record and make the changes that are necessary and click OK. Great. Now up here, we can go to the dashboard. And by the way, as you go through and enter your time into the system, you will see everything that you've been entering. But if you wanted to narrow your search down to a specific month or a specific date range, you can do so with this upper right section to sort of filter through some of your entries. Uh, you can see down here in the logbook uh, summary, it'll show you a uh, summarized view of the different categories that you've logged your time. And this will continue to change and grow as we move forward. So let's go back to the dashboard. And we're going to try a couple of different scenarios, a couple of different entries. Go back to report my service. Now it's important to note that your time has a window that you can enter it. That is to say, from the time that you've, you've taken the AT class or from the time that you've done your volunteer time, you have 45 days from that event to record it into the system. You cannot go back, for example, today and enter what happened 46 days ago. So be very conscious of, of that window. And my best thing to say is develop the habit of entering the information the day that it happened or very soon thereafter. That way you don't fall behind. Sometimes if it's a very busy week, sure, you can write it down on a piece of paper or what have you. And then at the end of the week, go ahead and enter it. As you saw in our last entry, you do want to make sure that you backdate it. So again, today we were logging the time that we spent on Wednesday. And so it's important that I remember because by default, the date that gets populated is today's date. So let's take a look at another entry. Let's see, let's take a look at what, what would happen soon. We're going to do initial training field trip. We are in the process of planning 
the field trips that, will, that you will soon take. And so this entry, again, looks very much like what we did in the initial training entry. Now, I'm not going to fill one out, but again, this is just a, a quick view of this is where you would log the time spent on that field trip. And if you recall, AT opportunities like these field trips do not include travel time. Volunteer time, you will include the time from the moment that you left your home to the time that you returned home. Not counting any stops along the way to get lunch or dinner or what have you. I'm going to cancel this, go back to report my service. And for some of you that are beginning to uh, start volunteering, we will select, let's, let's practice on this one, maintaining native gardens and trails for public access. In the description, you will notice working with approved partners, which must be listed, to develop or maintain native plant gardens and maintain established trails. May include, may include new wildscape plantings, removal of invasives, provide interpretive signs, wildlife viewing blinds, cleaning of debris or over, overgrowth, improve public access, and we must report the location and the partner. In many of these entries, we will include examples such as Ramsey Park. So let's say that last Thursday, which is when the main cleanups take place, we were there and we volunteered for two hours. So we, in our description, would say Ramsey Park, pull weeds, planted new seedlings, watered garden. So what we've included is where we were at, Ramsey Park, and that implies that our partner is actually the city of Harlingen. We've been working with them for quite, some, quite a while and their Parks and Rec department uh, is one of our, our partners. And so just by list, listing Ramsey Park, it tells us who the partner was. We describe the activity. Now, for your own records, you could say, well, you know what, I traveled 10 miles to get them. This does not count towards your volunteer time, but it does give you an ability to go back and for some people pull out the amount of travel time, the number of miles traveled, because as a nonprofit, you can uh, include that in your taxes if you wish. Now, here's an important section for some of our categories, impact data. Now, impact data refers to us interacting with the public. So let's say, for example, you're working out at Ramsey. You had a couple that walked by and stopped and asked what was happening. You describe who we are, what the efforts are, what we're trying to do at the park. And so you would have impact data to report. And so we would say yes, and which populates this bottom section. And you don't have to worry much about the male, female, and the race or anything like that, but we are interested especially in, in whether they were adults or a combination of adults and children. In our case, let's pretend they were just two adults, so we would, we would, rank, we would list two people that we actually touch base with. Now, if you were part of the group and there were five of you working at Ramsey, only one of you would report impact data. And so amongst yourselves, you can simply say, hey, I'll record that uh, impact data or ask if somebody is going to report it. As a trainee, you can certainly look towards some of the active members and say, will you be taking care of the impact data? If you are working at Sea Turtle Link, and in my scenario, I've worked on the hospital side, and if I see 20, 30, 40, 50 people come by, I don't necessarily have to go in there and jot every single uh, count of everybody that I spoke to, but have a good idea in your mind as to how many people you interacted with. 
and you would want to record that as impact data. If this was a totally new project, we can report new acreage, or if it, we're blazing new trails in a very new location, then we would report the number of miles of trails that we've created. So let's say this entry is complete. We will go back and click OK. And we'll go back to our dashboard. Now again, to see what we can do with the View My Logbook, I'm going to go back to our logbook. I see now that I have the initial training class still there, and here's our Maintain Native Gardens. If I scroll, I can see a little bit more information, including the impact data. It gives me at least a summary as to what was here, Ramsey Park. But let's say I realize that, wait a minute, I, I haven't been approved for any hours, but I only logged two hours. I forgot to include my travel time. So I can select the record, edit the selected record, and come back and say, you know what, I, I, I actually took um, 30 minutes, 15 minutes both ways to get to Ramsey Park. So I can change my entry to 2.5. And then let's say I find out that actually somebody else reported the impact data. I can go back and say, actually, no, I don't want to report impact data. I did not. Somebody else is going to inter uh, record the time or the numbers of people that we talked to. We can then click OK to save it. Now, before I do, we log our time in 15 minute increments, with 15 minutes being a quarter of an hour, 30 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes, three quarters of an hour. So make sure that if you did spend two hours and 15 minutes, you log it as 2.25, or in our case, two and a half hours, 2.5 we can click OK. And we will see here's our 2.5 hours that have been updated. Now, if there is an error and the hours have been approved, this checkbox will no longer appear. You will need to contact either myself or Joni Gillis, who heads the BMS system for us, and ask that they make a change to that historic record. If it is, if it's something significant that we need to take care of. I will now go back to the dashboard. Oh, and by the way, you can see how the logbook entry summary has been changed as you've been adding different things. Your mileage, the number of hours and so forth will continue to evolve. Let's go to report my service and let's go through a couple of other different scenarios. I mentioned advanced training. Your initial classroom training and field trips fall under initial training. But let's say you attended the shell club meeting or there was a presentation by Texas Parks and Wildlife Sea Grant on the soil erosion. And so because they're advanced training, we're looking into the category of AT. Field trip, this is, we will have field trips for the chapter as a whole. We will be having chapter meetings. So this is where you would log that chapter meeting. But here, chapter partner approved organization. So if this is an organization, again, that we've already established a relationship, we can select this item. This gives you a description of what this is for what you would want to include in the description. And so let's say that this was something from last Saturday. It was a one hour training. It was presented by, let's say Texas Sea Grant. This Texas Sea Grant uh, presenter was Kate De Janeiro.
subject was prevention of flood damage in coastal regions. Again, the partner could be the SPI Burning Center. If you look up here in the description, it could be Texas Parks and Wildlife, AgriLife, Texas University, and so forth. So there's a long, large collection of organizations that, that we certainly partner with. And if they're doing a special session, uh, this is where we would do it. This AT, Chapter Partner Approved Organization, uh, does imply that this was something that we did face-to-face. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. I am going to look at our categories again, but online webinar training. This will be a scenario that this was a virtual meeting. Now for our chapter, if you attend our chapter meeting virtually, still log in under chapter meeting. But if it's an online webinar, by UTRGV, then you would select AT online. Let's see other categories. Every year, Texas Master Naturalists have a state meeting. This is where you would log that. Texas Master Naturalist provides a lunchtime virtual presentation by various speakers across the state. You would log that as a TMN Tuesday. And if you, there's special certifications that you will find out there, things such as the Texas Water Certification Training, they're offered uh, annually. As those announcements are made, I, I typically will pass that along with everybody, to everybody. Two interesting categories also, the beach cleanup. Let's, let's go through that scenario. Beach cleanup or dune restoration. And let's say this took place uh, right after the new year, including drive time, I spent five hours. And these are cleanup events that are typically coordinated by uh, various organizations. So let's say this was a special sea turtle link. This is where Highway 100 ends on the island. And again, which if you interacted with the public, this would be impact data. If again, you're the only one entering it, and we can click OK. Now, this was beach cleanup. If you go to your neighborhood park, or if you go to the beach on your own and you make the choice to clean it up, pick up some trash, we have a special entry that is called pick up the valley. And so in this scenario, as you look at the description, collect and remove trash and debris from public areas. And let's pretend that we did this last Sunday. I volunteered for one hour and I picked up trash at Olivera. Park in Brownsville. So we acknowledge the fact that if we want to go out there and just pick up some trash, I mean, that is something very noteworthy, something that we should try to do. Uh, the one thing that we do stress is make sure that you uh, do it safely. Uh, if it is trash along the side of a busy highway, we would prefer that you don't do that. We don't want anybody getting hurt doing something like this. Volunteer time. What if it took me 15 minutes to drive there, 15 minutes back, then I can record an hour and a half for total volunteer time and picking up trash at this area. Again, impact data. If you're out there picking up trash with your Texas Master Naturalist hat, Texas Master Naturalist shirt, and somebody stops by and says, hey, what, what is Texas Master Naturalist? Again, when you interact with the public and share our mission and our objective and what you're trying to do, then you would have impact data to report. So we will click OK. 
Well, let's take a look at a couple of other categories. One thing I, I would recommend is if you're not sure which category to report something towards, select, let's say, maintenance duties and take a look at the description. We put the descriptions there to hopefully help folks understand what this category was for and when and how to use it. In this case, maintenance duties assist staff or approved partner with routine maintenance of equipment and facilities, construction, demolition, mowing, painting, and so forth. So we have some members that help out at uh, Sea Turtle Link, and sometimes they're essentially cleaning the boardwalk, cleaning the areas where the visitors will uh, interact. And so that would be the maintenance duties. I'm going to cancel this entry, go back to report my service, and I'm going to take a look at another one, and that is, we already looked at maintain native plants and gardens. So you can imagine that's more of a fixed garden activity that we're doing versus maintenance duties. It can almost cover anything else that you're doing to help repair and maintain the, the site for our partner. Now under natural resource management, this is one of the big events that we participated in, in the past, something like real reforestation when we're reintroducing plants into uh, what was farmland. We have partners that we go out to the estuary islands and plant some natives or pull up invasive. So, Again, this natural resource management is a separate category. It isn't a, a public access park. It is more of a restricted area that we're allowed to gain access because of our partners letting us in to help them with things like that. Again, the description helps a lot in trying to figure out what we want to do. Go ahead, cancel. Go back to report my service. We talked about advanced training field re research. Uh, some of you may want to participate in things like the Christmas bird count, uh, special surveys of birds from Texas Audubon. Uh, this would fall under field research for bird counts. Uh, some of you may want to do uh, the tracking of uh, rainfall. I can't remember what COCO Raw stands for, but that is where you would log time to record those water measurements every day. For those of you that do birding, uh, we can touch base on e-birding. Uh, there's a relationship between the time you spent doing a survey versus the amount of time that you spent logging into tools such as eBird. Field research with Red Todd Rangers, this is an opportunity to go out there and take measurements when a, reef, when a red tide is, is possibly out in the Luna Madre or, or on the Gulf. Uh, we have a group of members that are trained to do that. And so whenever we get called to go take measurements, then we will log it as field research Red Tide Rangers. Let's take a look at maybe another. There are a couple of categories that we, we should look at uh, training and education. Training and education would be an opportunity for us to lead, organize, develop, deliver, instruct, or staff an education activity where participants have a planned learning objective and generally stay for that full event. It's perhaps doing a presentation at Huawei. That would be a training in educating. This is different than manning a table at an event. So if I go back to report my service and I look at outreach events, this is where the participants come and go and have the opportunity to stop and talk and chat. So some of these things, uh, some of the events that you may be volunteering at you may want to take a look at is it an outreach event versus a training event and it just depends on the scenario of uh, the environment that you were in 
So if you selected an outreach event or the training, then chances are good that you would have impact data. Again, if you're, if you're part of a group that did the training or manned the outreach table, then only one of you would have to report that data. Again, there is a lot of possibilities of different entries that you can make within the VMS system. The best thing to do is go through a couple of simple entries as they occur, such as go in and log your time in the initial training class. If you've already attended a couple of webinars, a couple of other advanced training opportunities, go ahead and log them as well. And what we'll do is we'll take some time at our next class to sort of review any questions that you might have as you begin to take a look at some of these things. Now, one last look, if I go back to view my logbook, if you remember, I'm logged in as uh, Dan, and obviously I've made entries on his behalf, so I will go through here, select all of them, and delete selected records. So now Dan has a clean slate. He can go in and enter his initial entries. I'll go back to dashboard, hit log out. And please give it a try. Thank you.